Welcome, welcome back, family, to another episode of Healing for the Culture podcast with yours truly, Ivory Shields, where we have uncomfortable conversations and teach you the tools that you did not learn in school. Welcome back, family. I have a very special guest today, y'all, that I am super excited to have a conversation with. This queen is so dynamic. Um, and when I tell y'all the title of her, her manual, her book, you're going to see why I say that. <laughs> this is none other than Miss Tavia M.D. Welcome to the show, sis. Welcome, 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 queen. Thank you so much for having me, Ivory. Really, really excited to be here and be a part of this. Awesome. Yes, we are so happy to have you. So I call you a, a self-love expert. Yes. Yes, because you went through this whole journey of loving yourself. Yes. And that put you in a space where you weren't even looking for love. Mm -hmm. And love fell into your lap. Yes. Pretty much. <laughs> Definitely did. Definitely. That's how it worked. But then the Bible actually says that. It doesn't tell you to look for love. It tells you it finds you. Absolutely. Who finds a wife and finds a good thing. So that means he got to find you. Absolutely. <laughs> you just got to have yourself in the right hand space. In the right space and to receive it. To receive it. Absolutely. So without further ado, Queen, tell folks who you are in your words and what you do. Sure. So my name is Tavia MD. I'm a mom. I'm a self-published author. I'm also a celebrity publicist and I own my own agency, Tavia MD Agency, that's been thriving for the last 15 years. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Welcome, Queen. So let's get right into this conversation. Y'all know me. I like to talk about the childhood. Mm -hmm. know I'm a childhood trauma um, healing from childhood trauma advocate. And so I like to highlight people's stories um, about their childhood because what those experiences that we have, they shape who we are as adults. And so when I have people on my show, y'all know that's my first question. What was your childhood like? And, and how did that influence you growing up, um, dating, and the kinds of choices that you were making? Sure. So, I mean, I'm raised by a single parent. Um, I, I say that because of the fact that my dad was kind of in and out of my life, but that was because of the turmoil that was going on between him and my mom. And when I say dad, I mean the dad that adopted me. I've never met my birth father. I just even realized, I just found out what his name was probably a couple of years ago when I was looking on my heritage. I asked my mom, like, hey, so what's my dad's name? It, it was never like a conversation growing up. Wow. I'm the oldest of three girls that she has. And my dad also has two other children. And we were just, you know what I'm saying, raised together in, this, in, that, in that essence. But, you know, my mother experienced just a lot of different relationships that I felt was unhealthy. She always was one of those women, she's very strong and never needed anybody for anything. And sometimes I felt like that was at her detriment. I didn't learn to early on that sometimes being too strong doesn't help you because then when you need help, nobody's there because they automatically assume you got it when you don't. Speak. <laughs> speak. Yes, that's, that's I, I, you know, unfortunately, that's a space that a lot of Black women we find ourselves in. We find, and we find ourselves in that space ourselves and we find ourselves growing up in that space. And mm -hmm. your point is, is, is really to our detriment. Definitely. But um, I guess the point of when I realized that something was off, because when I was dating, I started to mirror words that I remembered her saying when I was a child. Um, telling people that I didn't need them, that all they that they couldn't do anything for me. All things that I had heard her tell other people in the past were now a part of my vocabulary. And then I realized, well, if you're always telling people that you don't need them, then how can you actually secure someone to be there for you? Wow. So, so when did you realize that you needed someone? I think at first I realized I needed myself. 
Um, I didn't know who myself was. Mm. And I need to find out what that was, you know, coming up, you're always kind of like blending in and doing what everybody else wants, um, just so that you can have friends and just so that you can appear to have something in common and really just, you know, you leave the situations and the friendships and the events feeling kind of empty. And I always wondered why I always felt empty. I never felt really happy to be, I was never in the moment. I was always just there kind of listening and dazing in and out. And I didn't, I didn't understand why. So first it was more or less of trying to figure out what it is that I needed, what I liked, who I liked, what people I genuinely like being around, who did I allow myself to trust with my own personal feelings? Because a lot of times I was a soundboard. I listened to everybody, but I never, and I, and I give great advice. I, I tell people all the time, like, I'm going to tell you what it is. Like, don't ask me if you don't want to know the truth. I always tell people that. Don't ask me if you don't want to know. Because if you're just asking me just to, you know, just to get it out of your mouth, I'm going to tell you the truth. But you're not going to like me anymore. You're going to right, right. <laughs> you're gonna either say I'm mean, you're going to say I'm harsh, or you're going to say something about me. That's really yeah. not. It's just me telling you the truth. I am a mirror. And I'm going to tell you what it is love it it was just me also trusting who i can who could do that for me because i need to be checked every once in a while too i ain't you know i ain't perfect by any means but i need you know somebody to go you know tavia you fucking up <laughs> you know like, you messing up like this is what you're doing you need to get it together and and i unfortunately didn't have that so i had to navigate it my myself because what also comes with being a strong friend i think sometimes you attract a lot of weak friends yeah because they're always coming to you for everything and then mm -hmm. you're like if she can't solve this regular stuff how can i trust her with my stuff so then you're not growing you're stagnant uh oh so you figure that out oh honey you just dropped a whole lot of jewels this just then sis a whole lot. Of, I hope y'all got your notepads out, okay? Because <laughs> you just got uh, some some jewels for free ninety nine, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that you said you had to find yourself first. You mm -hmm. had to you had to know that you needed you first. Mm -hmm. You lost you. Yes. And I think that when we when what I what I found what I've come to know is that when we grow up in these um, environments where uh, there's no balance, you know, where it's too much to where it's where the woman has too much masculine energy, where there's no no real masculine energy coming in to, to balance out the feminine energy. It is very difficult for us to figure out and discover who we are. It's difficult for us to be authentic, to 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 discover our authentic selves and not even mention being our authentic selves because we're under all of this energy that is just chaotic and just doesn't make sense. At all. And so it's really difficult to know who you are. Um, and so that really goes back to what you said. You know, I had to realize that I needed myself first. Amongst friends, you're trying to be what everybody wants you to be, you know, you're trying to be what your mama wants you to be. You're trying to be what your, your teachers want you to be. And you lose yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to, to just figure things, we're already trying to figure things out as young people. As of course. Children. And then you got the grown folks stuff on top of you. Mm -hmm. It completely throws you off. So that, that, I mean, those are just some jewels. And yeah. and again, therapists needing the therapist. I have a counselor I talk to. I need a sounding board. Yeah. You know? I, 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 really, I mean, we all need sounding boards. It's just that we need to make sure that the people that's receiving the sound can really deflect and allow us to grow from whatever problem in which that we're having. Sometimes people, and these friends included, are not equipped to right. handle what you're spewing. Sure. And then you can't get upset because they're still navigating themselves and figuring out themselves. Absolutely. One thousand percent. That's a jewel, y'all. And that's why therapy and counseling is so important. 
is mm -hmm. so important because yes, our girlfriends, our sisters, you know, they have their place in our lives 1000%. We, we need our, we need each other. Sisters, girlfriends, homegirls, we need each other. But there's value in therapy and, and counseling in um, professional services, a coach. There is tremendous value in those services. So you did actually seek out therapy, right? Yes. Good. We got a therapist. Uh, Deb is my girl. <laughs> we talk once a week. I tell her what it is. She tells me what it is. She laughs at me <laughs> when I say craziness, but she helps me go, you know, Tavi, you know better. She'd be like, Tavi, you know better. All right. You know, she will hit me with that. Tavi, you know, you know how to talk correctly. So why are you out here acting a fool? You know, like, so you definitely need someone that, again, just being able to trust someone, with your raw emotion and your raw word, because if you find that you're constantly not able to do that with the people you're around, there's a problem. There's a big problem. And, you know, I, I want you to just talk, say a little bit more about um, finding your therapist. Did it take you a couple of trials to find the right person? Because I'm glad you shared kind of the dynamics of your conversations. It's like talking to your girlfriend. And mm -hmm. I think a therapist and patient relationship should be comfortable like that you you should resonate with that therapist so did it take you a while to find the right person well um first of all it took me a while to even get a therapist um i didn't real so um i had listened to a conversation um just you know listen to someone else's um platform and the woman said that she had been trying to find a therapist and couldn't find one and i thought that that was just like the most crazy statement to me it's like how do you not find a therapist they're like everywhere so their hotlines. Everyone's always spewing out these hotline numbers. Right. And one day in the middle of the night, I filled one out and no one got back to me. Mm -hmm. Didn't get a call, didn't get a text, didn't get nothing, an email. And I'm like, wow, if I was really wanting to hurt myself or really in a dark place and I've, you know, taken this leap and reached out to someone and no one got back to me, that could end really badly, right. like really, really badly for certain people. And because at that split moment is where, and I had dialed the number, the 800 number, and it was busy. And I was like, wow, like that's wow. crazy. And um, I got my therapist actually from talking to a friend. He was like, yo, I'm going to get into therapy. He said he was going to do it. He actually did it. And I said, hey, let me get that card. You know, never never know when you'll need, I'll need one. And I did. I called. I set up an appointment. They got me um, in with someone maybe a week later after signing the docs and giving my health insurance stuff over. And we've been, you know, working together ever, ever since. And I think that even as people, most of the people we get are by referral. Mm -hmm. Yo, you be like, hey, like, who, who does your nails? Who does your hair? You know, who does your brows? People are very, very quick to go, oh, this girl here or this person there. So now I actively, you know, we'll post. This is my 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 therapist. This is her information. This is one of her offices. This is who I go to who does all my doctor appointments. This is who my black gynecologist is. This is who my black dermatologist is. Like just yeah freely posting it because you never know when somebody went and there's no judgment you never know who will need it and i just actively put it out there because you know what i'm saying there are people who have dm'd me and said you know i really was thinking about going to see a dermatologist so i was but i was too scared to say it and i was covering it up with makeup or i really was thinking i need a therapist but didn't know where to go or who to turn to so social media, those parts are very refreshing for me. Oh, I love that. I love that you shared that. And that's a nugget for me. I will definitely do that. Um, normalizing, you know, sharing our therapist. Because mm -hmm. like I said, we, we talk about who we go to for our nails, our hair, mm -hmm. and this and that. But let's normalize who, let's normalize referring our therapist. Ooh, my body is home. Taking care of your body, going to the doctor. Stop just acting like things are going to go away. 
<laughs> oh yes, we 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 have two choices <laughs> for these 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 feelings, these sensations we have in our guts. We can ignore them or explore them. I mm -hmm. see it all the time. And if you ignore them, they're gonna kick, continue to knock on your door. Mm -hmm. like the they're gonna pop up every now and again. They're gonna leave for a little bit, but they ain't gone. They're gonna be back. <laughs> they will be back. <laughs> They will be back like Uncle Sam, honey. You cannot get rid of them. You yeah. cannot get rid of them. Let me put y'all put up so y'all can make sure y'all follow T Tavia um, on Instagram at Tavia MD. Uh, she drops jewels. So make sure y'all follow her. So <laughs> you went on this journey of, of self mastery and self love. Um, and you were talking about your 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 father. Mm -hmm. And so what I noticed or what I know is that when we grow up, myself included, when we grow up without our fathers, we have this father wound. And mm -hmm. so we, a lot of us will have these abandonment issues mm -hmm. from our father. How can you describe just, you know, if someone's in this, in this space and they don't realize it, because I think a lot of times we don't know what it looks like. We don't understand that the way I'm showing up in my relationships with men, this is because of these abandonment issues. So mm -hmm. can you describe just, you know, what, one or two things, what that, what that was like for you, what you experienced, how you behaved or how you responded? Well, there was a nostalgia there because when my dad was around prior to my mom and dad breaking up in the home, he was like my comfort zone. He was always very you know, attentive to me. He always knew everything per se about me. So like I noticed that when I got into rela relationships, any little kind gestures were appealing to me. Like they could be the most messed up person in the world, but if they were attentive to me in whatever way that I could receive it, I was happy with it. I was happy with the little tidbit because I missed it. Yeah. I missed, you know, the the attentiveness, the the how was your, just small things, how was your day, or bringing me a tea. He could have been cheating on me with five women, but because he woke up every morning and bought me some tea, I was happy. <laughs> that was like, why are you, oh, like, erasing this? Right? <laughs> like, what is going on? <laughs> so I out. <laughs> I was like, why are you ignoring this? <laughs> and even like I said, when I noticed that I did because I missed, you know, the feeling. The you know the it was hurt. I was holding on like my dad had like this plaid shirt, and I held on to it forever, but until it didn't have a scent in it anymore because I missed him, and I missed him being there, and I was upset. That he wasn't, but it wasn't my choice to say. Mm. No one was listening at that time. So it was, it wasn't until, you know what I'm saying, that I started realizing that things, things were showing up that I realized I needed to change them. If I wanted to have a different outcome than what my parents had. Wow. Thank you for sharing that because that's such a, a unique and nuanced specific example mm -hmm. and I think a lot of women can relate to that mm -hmm. you know, it's the simple little gestures like how you doing and but everything else is wretched mm -hmm. you know but we hold on to that one little you know how you doing good morning beautiful mm -hmm. you know, we hold on to that <laughs> yep well, we took time out his day girl to text me you want to show your friends you want to tell the world that he didn't Mind you, he's sitting up here, you know, with every girl thing walking. <laughs> she out of both draws leg. Exactly. So that that's such I'm a perfect my clothes today. Why <laughs> <laughs> oh, you anyway, he both fold your clothes? <laughs> that's a perfect example. So so what was your like your your first step to rebuilding yourself when you realize, okay something's wrong here. This ain't feeling right. What you went to therapy, what was like your first action step that you did to start um, healing yourself and rebuilding your confidence? Well, I didn't go to therapy first. I actually went to therapy last. So what exactly happened is I'm, I'm a very big believer that God shows up to you in different ways. So I happened to be at a very low point just in my heart. I had just you know, separated from another man 
who had I came to find out via Facebook that he was actually married. And I did not know we had been together for like six months. He had been spending the night at my house five nights a week. And I had no idea that he was married. And it's simply the reason why is because they had worked the same job, but they had two different shifts. Mm. So like she had like the overnight shift and he had the day shift. So that's how he was able to maneuver us both. And I was trying to look for my my smile because you know when you're hurting, you're trying to dig yourself out and just look for your your laugh, your smile, so you can get toward it because it had been like in the past. I'm like, all right, girl, you got 48 hours to grieve this, and then you move on. But I just found out that I wasn't moving on. I was really just hurt because I thought this was it. And I was watching Cat Williams. Um, one of his stand-up comedies, and he said he was like, they're real men in attendance, and if, you know, you're a woman of a certain age, and you're still saying that, you know, niggas ain't shit, you need to figure out what it is about you that's attracting these ancient niggas. And when he said that, I was like, yeah, what is it about me that's attracting these men and I lay I paused the movie and I lay back in my bed and I, and I was like thinking of the last three guys I dated and I was like they could have been cousins like they had the same build they were all right they were they all were doing the same things and all of the relationships ended the same way I mean there were different scenarios but they all ended the same way and I was like okay you have a type that type ain't working for you <laughs> like, don't care who comes to you looking scrumptious. He, yeah. he ain't for you. Yeah. Let him go. You can say that he look good and let him go. He ain't got to be with you. <laughs> let him go. That ain't for you. And then <laughs> he ain't for you. So can't lose. <laughs> that's the cat. Culture. So then it was like, all right, well, if that's not for you, what's for you? Mm -hmm. what, what are you like so then it's like I would just like I said lay in there just recall conversations of my friends complaining or saying what kind of man that they like because you know your friends always tell you what they like and I was laying there and I was like that could easily be any guy like if I'm sitting here and I'm saying I want a man who's taller than me has a good job believes in, believes in God dresses well um, well groomed um, the laser down in bed. That could be anybody. That's not specific. That's not specific. And then you're 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 missing certain parts because you can find all that, and then he's not faithful. Or you find a man who is um well off, and then he's abusive verbally, physically. You're not being specific. If right. the person that's supposed to really bring somebody in your life is God, he got he need more direction because <laughs> that could be anybody so then i just took the time to figure out okay well what does tavia need from someone to be happy with them not content happy and it was i need somebody that understands the fact that sometimes i like to lay in the middle of the bed and i don't want to be bothered for a couple of hours I need someone that understands the fact that i'm an entrepreneur and most of my clients are men and them be okay with that mm -hmm. i someone who's romantic in the sense that they do like again remembering all of those little little tidbits and you know remembering our anniversaries and doesn't mind you know exploring when i'm trying to do you know crazy freaky things he's all right with that okay we gotta keep doing it but you know he's right he down okay? i need someone who likes to travel who's faithful <laughs> you know what i'm saying who's who's faithful to me and who genuinely cares about me and what's important to me, i.e. my daughter. Because at the time, I was raising my daughter. And I then, I looked for it no more. I wrote it down in a book, closed the book, and that was it. I went outside. Because <laughs> you, know? you can't find him in the house. He ain't in your house. He ain't in your house. Right. <laughs> Like people be like, oh, I need a man. Girl, you don't even go nowhere. Where you which is it gonna be the mailman? UPS man, FedEx, or who? Because that's the only people that's coming to the house. <laughs> <Store clerk. laughs> who you gonna find? Like you, you ain't even going outside. And this is pre-COVID, of course, of course. Pre-COVID. Right. <laughs> you don't even 
I know this. You gotta go outside. You can't keep telling people you ain't going nowhere. You tired. You ain't nobody. So I, I had to go outside. <laughs> Went outside. Go outside, y'all. <laughs> go outside. Went outside and a um, friend had invited me to her birthday party and I ended up meeting my husband. I was like, why does God keep following me around? Like, why he here? <laughs> like, 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 and he was very nice, very well put together, looked very preppy. He was kind, he was attentive. Like we had all took a group shot. And of course I got to be the acrobat. I get on top of the couch. So that I could, you know, get my little pose on. You know, if I could get their pose. You was feeling good, Tiff. Yeah, yeah. Good. I had them drink. And then when it was time to get down, I was like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I got these heels on. I ain't wore heels in a minute. I'm going to get down. <laughs> and he came right over and was like, you need help? And, and normally, I'd have been like, nah, nah, I got it. That's, I, but that time, again, because I had started... To already, I was like, "Yup, I sure do need yeah. some help." Like, uh-huh. and he took his hand, took his hand and got down, and, and wasn't embarrassed. Mm-hmm. But again, it was removing. I had already started the work of removing just all of those those things and those fears and those barriers. So when we had left the the venue, like I always tell the the funny story of how we first held hands. And that was because I saw a guy literally through the mirror make eye contact with me like he was going to try to holler at me. And, and my husband was standing next to me and I just grabbed his hand. And I was like, hold my hand. We're together. We're together. We're at the together. time, he wasn't. This is your soon to be. This is your your boyfriend or no, nothing. You just met. Nothing. We, right. just met. we just met. So I'm like, <laughs> he was just around. He just kept being like around. So it was like, I was like, hold my hand. We're, we're together. Because I knew the guy was going to try to, I knew it. You know how you know, girl. You could tell when the man was about to try to holler. And I was not feeling this man. He was outside. It was raining. He up in a drop top, brands in the rain. I'm like, why is this top? He doesn't know how to work that car. That's a rental. That's a rental. Because if he knew how to work that car, that damn drop top be out. He didn't know how to use it. Right. And I'm like, I was like, hold my hand. We're together. And he was like, uh, okay. <laughs> I walk out and the guy p- spots that we're holding him. Okay. So he doesn't say nothing and he gets my homegirl in back of me. And she like, when she realizes what happened, she's like, dang. Like, like, you know, <laughs> walking up to her with a pencil and a paper in the rain. Talk about, can I get your number? I'm looking at her. I was like, laughing. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> cursing me under her breath because she sees the setup that has just transpired that I used the, <laughs> I oh used a mutual friend to get away from that scenario. That is hilarious. Oh my God. That's a hilarious story. What a what a fantastic love story though. It's yeah. hilarious. It's funny. It's it's just beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And and I just want to go back to where you where you first took personal responsibility. And yeah. I talk about this a lot, family. This is, you know, when we are when we are going on these journeys of self-love and healing and self-discovery, it really takes a lot of personal responsibility. Yeah. What do I mean by that? I think you displayed that displayed that exceptionally when you made the decision to say, okay, these men over here that I keep attracting, they're cute and all, and it's nice to look at and it's wonderful, but that's not for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one common denominator in this situation and that's me. Mm -hmm. Taking that personal responsibility to say, okay, I know that this is great and it feels good temporarily, but I've got to distance myself. I've got to make a better choice. I've got to take personal responsibility for my own actions and choices that I make and say, you know what? When I make this choice, it creates this outcome that I don't like. So let me do something different. That's super. That is a great example of personal responsibility. And I think that if we want better outcomes, um, especially in love, in relationships, we do it 
women, we do it with work. Mm -hmm. We do it with our jobs. We, we take personal responsibility and make good choices. But for some reason, when it comes to matters of the heart and our feelings and emotions and things like that, we have a tendency to um, not take personal responsibility and not make these better choices. So kudos to you. And thank you for sharing that because that's such a, an amazing example. And wow, the story of how you met your husband, that goes down in the books because that's <laughs> You know, definitely, a lot of people always ask, like, how do you meet? But I mean, the, the importance of writing my book was to remind people that I was Tavia before I was Tavia Herbie. And I did the, the work of finding Tavia before I was able to attract Herbie. And that's what you put in your book. So your book is a manual. Yeah. That that goes through step by step of what you did and what helped you on your journey. Tell sure. us about that manual, sis. Oh, a quick guide to advise you your pussy ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that because it's a lot of it's a lot of hot girls out there that do, who think that that's what's going to attract and keep someone when it doesn't. Um, who you are attracts and keeps someone. Yo, and your vagina is a perk. You know, because I was raised by men and they always told me, you know, pussy ain't got a face. <laughs> you just go from person to person. You know, he's like some looser or tighter than others. But for the most part, it's the same hurrah. Ain't no fireworks shooting out, you know, at night. You know, what's keeping you is the person it's attached to. And I just want to remove the fact that there is just more to you. There's so much more to you. And there's and that person or whatever person that you are with, no matter your preference, should honor you before they get there. <laughs> before they get to your WAP. Before they get to that WAP, they need to know you from top to bottom and be okay with dealing with you. Because everybody got that 20. Hello. Everybody got that 20. All right. That 80-20, right. everybody got it. It's just more or less of who is willing to put up with that 20 and be okay with that 20 because they love you. And the sun rises and sheds on you. And that's it. Yes. Love it. Absolutely. Y'all, you got to get this guy. You have <laughs> to get it. She's, she's laying it out for you. I mean, this is... You know what what I what I love is the title. <laughs> it's very shocking. There's some people who get offended by how vulgar it is, but it's meant to be vulgar. It's meant to let you know that you need to appear and show up for you. Cuz yeah. like I said a lot of times people will will strip you from your journey and from what you've accomplished and they'll all attribute it to the fact that you're married. Or attributed to the fact that you are with a man. No, I was this person before. Before. Mm -hmm. You have an I had to be this person before. I would have never attracted that man or been able to see that man. Right. Because he was nothing like what I had originally in my mind that I should be with. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nothing like. And that's, and you know, that's so um, important to bring up. Because we do get into our little routine and habit of dating this certain kind of guy. And we just don't, I think a lot of times we don't understand that we miss our, we miss great opportunities with amazing men. Like, um, I read recently, well, of course I, I read the book before, but Peppa said that she was supposed to be with Will Smith, that he was playing her heavy. And she passed on him and got with Tretch because he was too much of a nice guy. Too much of a nice guy. And she passed on him and went for, went with Tretch and they had their own tumultuous relationship. Yes, they had a beautiful daughter out of it, but you can tell that she wishes that she had gone the nice man route. Hello. But I mean, whatever the case is, how many years have we been envious of Jada and Will's relationship? And in her mind, that could have very well have been her. Mm -hmm. Had she stopped on that train. <laughs> and, I, and, and like I said, that's what happens with doing the work. Yes. 
That is what happens with doing the work. And and just to just to go back to the title of your book, I think it's so relevant <clears throat> with young, like, young women can see this and relate, especially like mm -hmm. earlier. You know, we have excuse me, you said hot girl, hot girl summers and mm. we have the WAP and we have all that. That's just glorifying sex and mm. pussy and what's between our legs and not in the right way. Mm -hmm. Because Don't get me wrong. We talk about this. Or I talk about this on my platform all the time that, you know, a woman's womb is the fruit of the earth. It is. This is this is the incubator. This is where everything's everything goes down and mm -hmm. this is not just to birth children we birth ideas we birth we birth so much from our wombs this is the creative space um mm -hmm. and so we have to protect it as that we have to treat it as that and 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 know that is very powerful definitely so we have to be protective of it and well, it i'm a woman and you know i'm a, I'm a feminist, feminist in its own right I definitely believe that in the industry of music, sex sells, and I'm never going to douse or put down or even take away from anyone's message or their art or what they feel. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I'm a very big believer that it's through music and through art that we're able to convey or, you know, actions, feelings that as women, we're normally silenced with. That's the whole purpose of, you know, so and Peppers, let's talk about sex and this other music just in the forefront. To let us say that we shouldn't be silenced. We have we have feelings, we have thoughts, we have, you know, we're not just timid women that should be seen and not heard, you know. So I'm definitely a, a avid of the WAP music and all other stuff, but I just feel that that's just a portrait. It shouldn't be just who you are. Because at the end of the day, Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion are different women. They're not just women that's running around and throwing their pussy everywhere. Cardi's a married woman. You know, Megan, Megan is a young woman who's, you know, basically looking for solid relationships. It's, these are just portions. Mm -hmm. they, you know, what they say, they want a lady in the street freaking the sheets. They're just, you know, conveying that freaking the sheets. And I'm, I'm all for it. But I just want like, that's why I have the title, Younger Women, to know that that's just not it. You're just looking at one side of the coin. There's still another side. And that other side is respect for yourself, respect for others, and commanding the fact that whatever it is that you decide to do as a woman, that you're happy, you're content, and you're, you know, very ferocious in how you convey your message. Because people make up their own mind. For sure. For sure. And to your point, to that point, I I I I have a different perspective about it because mm -hmm. I think it's I think we have to be careful when when there are younger women or boys and girls involved whose brains aren't fully developed, kind of going back to what we were talking about, talking about earlier, when we're in these chaotic environments as children, it's very difficult to figure out who you are. And if that's what you're seeing, WAP and hot girl summer and this and that, that's what you're going to attach yourself to. And so I think we have to be careful and mindful um, of that. And so that's, you know, that's just my take on it with the music. Mm -hmm. Grown folks, folks who are grown, who know the difference, mm -hmm. enjoy yourself. Knock yourself out. Live, walk <laughs> all night, honey. It's amazing. But <laughs> I also believe, to your credit, that celebrities shouldn't be raising your children. And that's just being real. I still believe that that choice doesn't go to this. That's not the onus of the celebrity. I do believe that that's the onus of the parent because of the fact that my child growing up couldn't watch half of the stuff you know what i'm saying i was listening to when i was growing up keep sweat you know he was all i give all my love to yeah. you you know just got paid i was Friday night. i was outside you know what i'm saying like i believe that you know but i still knew who i who i was and what was expected of me because again, of the, of the home base, even though I didn't, you know, always get that stuff from my mom. Cause she worked a lot. I still got it from her sisters. I still got it from my uncles of what was expected of me. I mean, we've all grown up. Well, my age, our age, 80 baby here. 
if I walked yeah. out the door, my skirt was too short, you know, I got pulled over by an adult, like, um, you need to pull your skirt down, all right? You can't right. be out here looking like you're selling something. I need you to get it together. You need, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stop hanging out with all those boys because you look fast. You know, those were things that happen. We've lost that. We don't have that now. And that's what I mean. And that's why I feel that we need to get back to us as a community. And Absolutely. And that that is why, like I said, celebrities should not be your child's role model, parent, dictator, addresser, whatever. They should just be there. <laughs> Direction, like my, my daughter knows who she is, whether no matter who else talks to her, she's already raised. She's not going to get re-raised. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like celebrities shouldn't be raising your kids in the first place. Absolutely. Parents' job. And then once that foundation is set, no one can stray what it is is already set because the mm -hmm. foundation is there. Right. And it, the, unfortunately, the problem is there are a lot of children who don't have those parents, who don't who don't right. have that solid foundation from parenting. You have parents who, who grew, you have a lot of parents now who grew up on this music. And right. so that's you know what they know and they pass it on to their children so it's just a you know that's such a a layered um a layered con a very layered con oh my me god you be, me and you be talking about that all day okay. right Let's I, I even with those girls who have been raised on it again you know what's in your heart is what's right and what's wrong right i, I had to break my generational curse personal responsibility personal responsibility I had to break my generational curse of not needing anybody, of treating people like they were only around when I wanted some companionship and not having and seeking value in relationships and interactions. I had to break that curse. That was something that I had to do for me because I made the decision that I wanted something different. When you want something different, you, you are different. And it takes sacrifice. It takes sacrifice because it ain't going to come right away. Mm -hmm. we I, didn't find, I didn't find my soulmate until I was 34 years old. Mm -hmm. We want to, we, we maybe I remove these timelines because people be like, I got to have be married by 25. I got to have, I got to have my house by 30. I got to have my first car by 21. And then what happens when those days don't come? Right. Right. <laughs> right. You up. Yep. And you, and yeah, and you beat your, you do, you beat yourself up yeah. and we, we don't want to be uncomfortable, but, yeah. um, sacrifice takes being a little bit uncomfortable it do. Um, until you get to the other side. You're right. You're right. You're definitely <laughs> right about that. Well, this was a, a phenomenal, I was about to say fantastic, phenomenal, all that conversation. Oh my God. Lots of jewels being dropped right here today on Healing for the Culture podcast with Ivory Shields and my conversation with Miss Tavia MD. This was beautiful, Queen. Thank you so much for thank coming you. on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Shouts to you. Absolutely. Now tell the family again where we can find you and what's next for you, Queen. Sure. So you can grab my book on TaviaMD.com. You can follow me at, as well on TaviaMD on Instagram. And what's next for me is, you know, continue to walk in my path and my truth and, you know, literally sell, you know, push these clients, you know, make them amazing. That's it. Yes. <laughs> push the clients, change the world, sis. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's what we're here to do. Well, thank you, family, for tuning in to another episode of Healing for the Culture podcast with yours truly, Ivory Shields. And next time, we'll see you all, family. And um, again, follow Miss Tavia MD, www.taviamd.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe the podcast, family. And follow me on Instagram at I am Ivory Shields. And family, we'll see y'all for the next episode. Peace and abundance. Y'all go forth and shine on purpose.